one has to come before the other, right? Like it's very difficult for you to ever be validated if you don't believe in yourself. There is no plaque or thing for your desk that says you are either of these things. It's very much a mindset. Activate your energy. Welcome to the Activated Authors Podcast, a show where we distill the core principles of what it takes to become a happy, healthy, and productive author, no matter what stage of the journey you're at. I'm your host, Daniel Wilcox. I'm an international best-selling author, as well as an author coach, speaker, and creative entrepreneur. But most importantly, I'm a lifelong student of all things productivity, psychology, and human behavior. Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Without further ado, let's dive in. What is up, Activators? And welcome back to another episode of the Activated Authors Podcast with myself, Daniel Wilcox, and here with me every single bloody week is... <laughs> Yes, I'm from that's me. Hello. Yeah, although that already we've already kicked it off with a lie every single week. We've we've literally just come back from a bit of a hiatus. Yeah, six or seven weeks at least. Uh, yeah, just without a small counting. Break. Yes, um, but we're back in June. Well, kind of. I mean, we're back in June recording, but we've also technically into another lie because we said we'd be back in June, but we're going to hit podcast feeds on the July. So <gasps> that's why, true. People shouldn't bother listening to us because we are unreliable. <laughs> it's pointless, and you get no value. Don't be liars. <laughs> Um, I want to I want to kick off just immediately with the fact that I probably sound a bit different because I have some kind of viral infection in my throat and anytime I laugh it leads to coughing so YouTubers enjoy the multiple different faces I, I will make throughout this episode um, but if I suddenly mute myself for any reason that's why and I can feel one coming right now so I'm going to say Sam how are you? <laughs> 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 that was the best <coughs> cough that I've ever heard in my life. I am, oh, mate, you know how I am. I'm ill. I'm really, really, something's wrong with me, and we cannot find out what it is. Like, originally that hiatus was uh, planned so you could take a little bit of R&R, get some time, figure everything out after, obviously, your health scare. And, yeah. I've been in and out of hospital. I've had an operation. Um, it was an exploratory laparoscopy. So like, just because when you say operation, it sounds very dramatic. And I feel like I have to um, qualify it by saying it. they were going in to look for something like mm -hmm. it wasn't. Um, they didn't find anything. So now I'm being passed on to other people to look for stuff, which I'm still waiting for. Um, in our very rapid NHS system. Yeah, which basically means that for the past six, seven weeks, I spent a lot of time of it on my arse. Um, I've really only just yesterday kind of started trying to get um, some semblance of work back because it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. It doesn't seem to be getting resolved quickly. Weirdly, the longer you're ill, the less they're worried about you, which is bizarre. Mm -hmm. um apparently like me vomiting multiple times a week and passing out and like my legs going out from underneath me and stuff because it's been happening for a long period of time now they're not that worried which is so weird but never mind um yeah so I'm just I've got to the point where doing nothing is actually more harmful for me because of yes. my mental health um I quote Sherlock from elementary when he says you should know by now what's in Boredom is more hazardous to my health than anything. And never was that true as well than during the pandemic. Like the mm -hmm. minute people were put on furlough and didn't have anything to do and were stuck yeah. inside, like mental health um, scares kind of arose. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's been a, and I was going to say, I was going to try and soften it, but it's been a sucky mm -hmm. month and a half, two months at least. Um, and as you say, the saga is still continuing. So appreciate you wanting to jump back on the podcast and get it rolling again. Yeah. Um, but I will... It? Yeah, and I will I will preface it and say, like, you know, stick with us. There might be, for whatever reason, that there's a possibility that weeks may come up in which we won't be able to fill in the weekly schedule. We'll obviously do our best to make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, and judging by, like, my health things over the last few months and then your current health things, like, <laughs> it's kind of touch and go. But we'll yeah, see. We're... Like, we're, we're here. We're in the seat. Yeah. And I would just like to say um, publicly, thank you very much, because uh, this man has been by my side at every, like, hospital appointment waiting for me to come out of surgery, all of the things, and you've helped me massively. And I know I said thank you, but I don't think there is a word in the English language that can convey how much I appreciate the absolute legend that you have been. 
Kumquat. <laughs> Thank you for being my number one kumquat. Yeah. <laughs> no <laughs> laughing. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, what a pair. Um, <laughs> okay, fun. so uh, other than... Obviously, the medical stuff that has basically consumed your life for the past yeah. seven weeks. Yeah, other what than it's consumed my life. Like, I'm bored of that. Like, like, give me, give me some cool stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, like work-wise, very little. I have been scrapbooking like a demon mm -hmm. to attempt to keep my brain from allowing my demons to come out. Um, so I've been enjoying that, and I've been cross stitching. And yeah, so that's, I mean, that's how I've been keeping myself kind of busy. How about you? How Man, have all you the been things. doing? Yeah, like I don't remember mm -hmm. what we said last time we were on air. Um, so apologies if some of these are repeats. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than this weird sort of viral throat infection, which is annoying as hell, um, like the last couple of months, have been busy but in very very good ways so i am doing a lot of tweaking of stuff behind the scenes with activated authors um obviously i shared a lot about the health stuff over the the, the few weeks leading mm -hmm. up to um when we went on hiatus and one of the things that i've had to do is uh get a new job so i've now got another quite flexible uh remote day job that gives me extra income and takes some of the pressure off of of me and my mental health while um doing other things um i've been doing a lot of thinking a lot of percolating a lot of trying to figure out you know what my what my future is and what that looks like because yeah like when when i say that i had sort of like an anxiety health thing and obviously ended up in hospital um obviously the physical symptoms of that are not nice and I still have sort of pains in my chest and things that are ongoing from that moment but like I don't know that I said this publicly but like in the few weeks leading up beforehand there was genuinely like I didn't even realize at the time but there's generally a real doom mindset like I was writing things thinking it was gonna be the last book that I wrote because my hands were hurting so much um and like I, I've been saying it to people for for months and months in the lead up to it like I was really struggling to find the fire or work out what I'm yeah. doing in terms of like my work and everything else and it turns out a lot of that was overwhelm a lot of that was obviously burnout like hard hard burnout mm -hmm. um and the last few weeks have been like ridiculously restorative on that front mm -hmm. because i i've dropped a lot of things I've, I've said no to a lot of things i've put a lot of things on pause um and i'm just really trying to as i said before build it one block at a time and like one of the things that i'm using at the minute which i'm finding incredibly helpful and you know there are many many versions of this kind of thing but like i have this very very pretty uh legend planner for it's people so that are watching on youtube um, I will put a, a link to that on, on Amazon, but it's it's very similar to the Clever Fox stuff, like in many, many ways. Like I wanted it because I'm a legend and because it's pretty. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a Clever li Fox bunny, but... Literally, it could have been Clever Fox, but if it was like Legend Fox, I still would I would have bought that one over it. Yeah, of course. Um, so I've been using that to plan a lot of stuff and really sort of narrowing down on uh, the things that I want to do. And with, I mean, I've got quite a few updates that I've got on here that I don't want to overwhelm people with, but I'll list a few like, so... Um, I went to Stokercon um, mm -hmm. a week and a half ago, which seems ridiculous at this point. Yeah, and um, I dealt with that perfectly. Carry yes. On. So I flew over to <laughs> Pittsburgh with uh, John Crinan, with Gemma Ramore, with Ali Wilkes, uh, and met some other Brits out there, CC Adams and uh, Neil um, McRobert from the Talking Scared podcast. And we kind of just had some fun in Pittsburgh. We visited museums. Um, we visited a zombie museum and went to the Monroeville Mall, where Day of the, the Dawn of the Dead was uh, originally filmed. And then uh, for people that don't know, StokerCon is the Horror Writers Association's annual conference. It's sort of four days, horror writers together, horror panels, the Bram Stoker Awards are given during one of those weekends. And it was just amazing. Like, I can't emphasize enough. You know, I said it before when I came from back from Chillicon, which was the horror one in the UK. Yeah. Like, just being around your tribe and your people that get what you're doing and love what you're doing. And, like, horror people are the nicest people. Like... I can't I can't say that enough like it makes the most sense when you think about it most people repress all of their demons all of their shit and horror writers just throw it out on the page mm -hmm. and there's kind of like a real a real um rebellious uh culture mm -hmm. around horror so it's very much like all the rejects all of the freaks band together and it's like let's collectively be rejects and freaks mm -hmm. um and so that was amazing like I my Book the nowhere line um i had a couple of pitches with publishers that i was because i've said before i'm attempting to do something different with this book 
uh, and I had three people request full manuscript reads, including how many, the very... How many, you had three people request. How many pitches did you do? Uh, two. You did two <laughs> pitches and you yeah. had three... Okay, I had three, just, three requests. I just wanted to underline that because uh, I feel like you were downplaying that a little bit. And it's, yeah, it's... and possibly possibly a call in a, a couple of weeks with Kurt Vonnegut's agent. Um I mean, no big deal. No, no big deal. Uh, but yes, yeah, so like one of the, one of the publishers is like incredibly big. The other two are like very, very uh, reputable, and I'm like kind of seeing where the dice lands on that one. But even just you know having the pitch done and learning about that process, like it was a really good experience. Like yeah. I I said to a few people that I feel bad for saying it in a way, but like the pitch was easy, and I think the reason the pitch was easy was because I know the book, I love the book, I worked on the pitch. Like any questions that are thrown my way like I know what I want this book to be and what it's mm -hmm. about and more than that I think because my marketing background I understand who the comp authors are and how to pitch it in a way that it's sellable rather than being like I really like this story because of my reason I it's love like this book it means everything to me yeah and it's like it's this author meets this author and it's this story and it's this story and like yeah so that was a really cool experience um so StokerCon was ridiculously recharging. Um, and then, as I say, I'm doing a lot of things with activated authors at me in the background. Um, and just to shout out what a few of those are. <laughs> um, I... Deep breath. <laughs> well, th this is the thing, like, I'm trimming it all back down. Like, I'm really streamlining a lot of the activated author stuff, making it easier for people to, to get involved, uh, making it more simple to manage from my side, because uh, I got a bit carried away. Um, but, sure. like, so one of those things uh, for people listening might be interested, very, very soon, not quite yet, but within the sort of next couple of weeks, uh, Activated Authors Community is going to be 100% free to mm -hmm. jump onto our server, to join the community, to chat, to be in there with us, um, and just get involved and, you know, find a tribe that will collectively support you, ask questions in a place that is facilitated to help you level up your writing and your author career. I'm very um, excited about this. <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's very, very cool. So I'm excited yeah. to see some people jump in um on top of that for people that are wondering uh the there will be an aa plus membership which is very mm -hmm. similar to the paid membership we currently have now so you will have access already to a lot of the discord stuff but for people who want to jump on and get a little bit extra get involved in all the live zoom sprints all the live stuff and get some really cool services and bonuses um there will be an aa plus option where you can pay a bit extra a month a bit like a gym membership and then you get all your discord stuff plus extra stuff plus extra stuff and all the live things with me um and then uh what else is going on we've got uh website services so mm -hmm. i'm at a point in which uh, i've been doing a lot of author websites for people and you know getting getting some um what's the word notches on that bedpost i guess <laughs> that's an interesting way of putting it <laughs> there's another way to put it i just can't remember a, what it was. A, but, i mean there is but it's miles on those tires i just i find it interesting that that's the first place your brain went that wasn't the first one <laughs> that was just the easiest one that's um, even more concerning Go i know <laughs> uh so website services so i'm going to be offering for authors to build websites uh, i've already got a handful that are, are done i've got a couple in progress um but keep an eye out for that because that'll be coming real soon um and they look sexy AF, I would just like to say. They really do. I mean, I've done all the Activated Authors websites. I did the Other Stories website. I did um, my website. I've done one for RPH Author. Done one for mm -hmm. Renee Gallant. I'm working on some stuff for you. I'm working on yeah, stuff for are. my sister. Like, I've got a bunch of stuff and a few other cool clients as well. So keep an eye out for that. That's going to be fun. Um, and an update on Flash Fiction February. Oh, yes. Yes. We're still in the process of... Well, in full honesty, we're only just about to get to the reading side of things. It's taken a long time. It was yeah, a, a lot, lot of people. Like, it's one of those things where it's it's that, like, oh, first of all, problems. It's, uh -huh. it's just taken us a long time to truly anonymize everybody because, mm -hmm. like, we both are big believers in, like, just judging the story on its merit and you cannot do that if you recognize the name attached to it you just can't yeah. you can try and be as unbiased as you possibly want to be you mm -hmm. won't be so like to truly like put in a system and then literally we have to manually go through each submission like remove names put on numbers so it takes a long time but yeah we're about to dive in and i'm yeah. very excited yes and once we start getting reading because obviously it's flash fiction like it should start moving quicker but as you say like the actual admin side beforehand <laughs> on top the of that's quick <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know we did flash fiction february and then i ended up in hospital and then you've been in that hospital so like there's a lot of hospital that's in the way <laughs> so blame the nhs hospital. blame the government but we won't yeah don't blame that. the nhs blame the government mm -hmm. like yeah you know let's 
let's let's turn our anger to the government, not the NHS, because yes. the NHS is doing the best it can with just so so few resources. <laughs> yep, yeah. So that's flash fiction February. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are most of the big notes that I've got on there. So that's what's been going on with me. Um I just I just oh. realized I completely so I have now Oh and I wrote a story. Me. Carry on. Huh? Did I, did I did I interrupt? No, I, I was just I, I wrote a story as well that's coming out in October. So over Okay, to you. you did. Yeah, no big deal. Just the Hawk and Cleaver. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah. Okay, cool. I just, just said it, and I was like, I should probably check. Just see, uh, you know, the Hawk and Cleavers, uh, other stories, massive Halloween special. No big yeah. deal. It's just going to be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just, I realised that I completely forgot to say that I have, like, officially started my audiobook business. Yeah. Like, officially, officially. So, like, obviously I've recorded um, your book, which is in edits at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, but I officially have my first client and I won't say, oh, my camera's doing the weird things again. Yeah. I won't, I'm not going to like say who it is or anything like that because, you know, it's Stephen King. That discussion. <laughs> but like, I've got, I've got a, um, yeah, I've got a client and I'm, I'm working on that. And so that's very exciting. Um, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Fun. Yeah. yeah. So watch yeah. out for that. People want an audio <laughs> book. There we go. Sam Frost. If you want this incredible voice, hello, on your... <laughs> I think audiobooks. Can you can you do your train stop? My oh um the next stop is Cockfosters. There you go. Rain not been on the underground. That was Sam. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. Been. Jesus, I would not be renting if that was my voice. <laughs> How can they get paid <laughs> like, a lot for welcome that? Welcome to my mansion. Do you think they get paid a lot for that? Yeah. Do you know like they have to it's such a like arduous task. And also to be that voice, you have to have some serious clout. Like you don't just walk in and be like, "Can I do it?" <laughs> well, no, but they might have just had like some, and I, I don't mean this in a horrible way. Some like nobody who's never done that kind of thing, just with a good voice in an audition, just like, "Yeah, we'll pay you a fiver." No, approaching. Yeah, no. no. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, what's something that you've enjoyed? Right. Shout out to Robin, Rob. <laughs> oh God! Because I know what this is. <laughs> Bless him. Um, he has been keeping me um, company and sane when uh, he has had days off. He's been driving on up to me and we've been hanging out and chilling. And he introduced me <laughs> to the great British sewing bee. And I have completed it. <laughs> I've completed all the episodes there on BBC iPlayer. Um, I now have a sewing machine and things to sew with. So thanks, Rob. <laughs> I loved it. I miss I miss Joe Lysett. Like I really like Sarah Pascoe as um a comic, and like I don't mind her as the host. I just it just feels more try hard with her. Or with Joe, it was just Joe being Joe. You're a big Joe fan, anyway. I fucking love Joe Lysett. Mm. That's the way. Uh huh. Uh huh. Joe Lysett. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, I very much enjoyed um spending time with Rob, watching The Great British Sewing Bee, and um, I, I already made myself some little baggies to put my chalks and my pastels in. Amazing. <laughs> That's really cool. And I will say, like, so I'm a fan of The Great British Bake Off, mm-hmm. and you obviously introduced me to a few episodes, and then we gobbled a whole series. We? Um, every Like, you were like, what? why isn't it on? <laughs> don't remember that um but it's hilarious how like to the formula to the dot it is to the great british bake-off yeah. like the formula that they've got obviously works for that kind of audience and it's quintessentially british isn't it it's it is. like your nanas with the doilies and the scones uh-huh, like, uh-huh. and they're not going to change it yeah yeah i'm going to sew a pinafore so i may enjoy this victoria sponge <laughs> exactly God, god enjoy a victoria yeah. sponge without one's pinafore yeah homemade. oh god forbid Oh, I really, I'm trying to get enthusiastic in this episode, but every time I like get close to like laughing or anything, I can just feel the coughs coming. So, yeah. oh, I've got to tone it down. But um, the thing that I've enjoyed this week, uh, oh, yeah. and actually over the last yeah. couple of weeks, I got so many books from StokerCon. All the books. <laughs> All the books. Like I didn't. All the books. I didn't plan for bringing books back because I was like, oh, I'll just I'll meet people. Like I'll definitely see books. Um, obviously, it's a 
conference. Um, but but like the first, literally the first panel I went into was called Buzzing About Books. And it was librarians uh, sharing their top four reads for the upcoming year. Um, and there was a table, like a long table on the way in. And I saw all these books and I was like, picked up one. And the woman was like, oh yeah, you can, you can take, you can take that if you want. I was like, okay, cool. I'll take, I'll take this free book. Uh, looked to the, to the left and saw a cover that I loved. And I was like, picked it up and just went, and she just nodded at me and went, yeah. And I went, any of them? And she went, yeah. So I had an arm stretch full of books. I sort of wobbled over to my seat with, and like 95% of them were, arcs that aren't being released to the public for like three months and there are some cracking titles in there like books that i've seen a lot over instagram and tiktok from people who are bringing out books soon um they're all now on my shelf and because a lot of the authors were there i got a lot of them signed so that's very exciting but the book that i started with just because the premise was incredible um which uh, i'll hold it up for people on the youtubes daniel krauss's whale fall um which is essentially a story, uh, it describes itself as the Martian meets 127 hours mm. in this action adventure thriller about a scuba diver who's been swallowed by an 80 foot, 60 ton sperm whale and has only one hour to escape before his oxygen runs out. Um, so Daniel Krauss is uh, an author who has done some stuff with George A. Romero. Uh, he wrote The Living Dead book. Uh, he's done loads of stuff with Guillermo del Toro. He did uh, The Shape of Water and Troll Hunters. So like there's mm. some clout in, in Daniel Krauss. But this... So the entire book is set over an hour, essentially. Pretty much. That's incredible. I didn't yeah. know that. That's a, yeah. That is it's a cool like concept. 330 something pages. But like, it is gorgeous. Like, it's the very definition of like an opening chapter that hooks. Mm. Um, it's definitely a thriller in the sense that like the longest page, the longest chapters are like three pages, but most of them are sort of a page or two. So like you can speed through this thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely fantastic. And I'm not sure. Oh, on sale August 8th. So That's when you get chance... so too far. Yeah, when you get a chance to read this in what six weeks, grab a copy because it is absolutely incredible. And yeah. And at this point, I would just like to say two things. Number one, um, we are not affiliated or sponsored uh by oh. Legend Planner or Mr. Kraus. Um, I meant to say that at the time. These are just things that Dan has genuinely enjoyed. And number two, mm. Thanks, Kraus, because whales were one of the sea creatures that I didn't fear, and you've just done fucked me up. <laughs> Have you not seen Pinocchio? Yeah, donkeys. That's the scary bit in mm. Pinocchio. They are messed like, up in Pinocchio. They don't make it look like being swallowed by a whale that much of an issue. They're just like, get a bit of smoke, put a bit of pepper on its nose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this book to you anyway. But With its brush teeth, that creeps me out about whales. Yes. Like, teeth should not be flexible. Yeah. yeah yeah um so that's what i've enjoyed this week uh let's go into our win from the community so yes we're going to shout out this week to the wonderful emma rose who graduated her phd last week dr rose week. doctor dr rose apologies yeah phd mm -hmm. is that mm -hmm. a doctorate that is isn't it a phd yes. is a doctorate yes. yes a doctor of phs yep. acids and alkalis mm -hmm. so <laughs> there you go so huge congrats and mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, huge congratulations, Emma. Um, and also recently passed a fiction fictionary certificate certification. So if you're a romance author or writing mm -hmm. something that has quite a lot of romantic elements into it, do check out her brand new editing business, which is Loving Story Edit. And you can find that at lovingstoryedit.com and check out what she's got going on because she's a fantastic person with she's... some fantastic hustle. Yeah, she is like so sweet, mm -hmm. so lovely. So, like, you don't get a PhD by, like, sitting with your thumb up your butt. Like, she's hardworking and just kind of, like, a real-life cutie pie. Yeah. Like, she's lovely. I love yeah. her. And she's also got a beautiful little French accent. I was going to say, if you're going to go for a romance edit... Yeah. Go to someone with a French accent. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. Excellent, Dan. French accent. Wonderful. That was stunning. Del Boy Apologies to every French person I've just insulted. Yeah. But I'm, sure, the you, French. I'm sure you've done British at some point. Just every... You've every insulted everybody. Every nationality. Oh, apologies. Apologies. <laughs> for my French. French. <laughs> <laughs> Into the question, Sam. Yes. I believe you have a question for us this week. I do. So, like, this is something that I have seen in my tenor as being like whatever the red queen ambassador they gave me a title it's very long i can't remember it but it's great uh -huh. um 
And honestly, I think it's it's not just a writer question um, in the sense of we all have, it's, it's definitely tied in with imposter syndrome. So the question is, after I've just waffled, when can I call myself an author? Like what qualifies me to say I'm an author? It's a very, very good question. And it is one that like, I remember very early on fighting with that as well. And mm -hmm. the strange thing about this question is like, in the beginning when you're new, the answer is very, very difficult. It's very murky and it's very far off. When you're further down the line, you realize calling yourself an author is literally just a mindset shift. Um, it's one of those things that unless you're, well, even people that have you know got creative writing degrees or PhDs and stuff, even they they struggle to call themselves an author, even though they have sort of certifications in writing. I think the main the main distinction for me is I believe you're a writer if you're writing, what mm -hmm. whatever that looks like. If you've written a poem, if you've messed around with short stories, you are in some form a writer. Agreed. If you've published a work, whatever that looks like again. So if that's up on Wattpad for free, if that's self-published, if that's through an agent or a publisher you're an author I feel I feel like that's really the only distinction of qualification there is is an author is someone who has you know penned a work that has been published and mm -hmm. the writer is someone that writes writes words um there is no certification anyone gives you there is no plaque or thing for your desk that says you are either of these things it's very much a mindset and what you kind of learn as you go through this business or even as you get older like with certain jobs like you know I wouldn't call myself a mechanic but if I Good. interviewed and got hired, yeah, Dolphin Sprockets, <laughs> if I got interviewed and hired by a mechanic, I would call myself a mechanic. Yeah. Because there's that instant, I've been accepted into this, these people view me as this, and therefore I'm that thing. Whereas writing is very much, um, and being an author is very much a selfish endeavour. It is, especially to begin mm -hmm. with. Like, it's pretty much entirely for yourself. Like, you, you go into a room by yourself, you start writing for yourself, you know, even if you want to start doing articles for journals and things, generally they want some kind of experience beforehand. But like, it's as simple and as difficult as you're a writer when you begin writing and you're an author when you publish something. Um, and as I say, it, it it is a mindset because imposter syndrome is hugely tied into it. People think there's this kind of, yeah. you know, most writers have been writing all of their lives or, you know, they've got years of experience. Like, because I had the advantage of being an English major um, for most of my life and therefore, it was a bit easier for me to go like I'm a writer because I'm writing books. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until I sort of published six or seven books that when people said like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "Well, I'm an author," because at that point I was like, "I think I think I can say this now." Yeah. Um, but the other thing is when you start embracing these roles, you treat yourself differently too. Mm -hmm. So someone who's like, I, I wouldn't consider myself a writer, even though you're writing short stories. Maybe you're going to groups. Maybe you know whatever you've, you're putting some kind of regular work into it. Um, by not allowing yourself to say that you're a writer, you hold yourself back from fully falling into that lifestyle and embracing it and, you know, enjoying the work that you do. Yeah. Um, and similarly, once you've published a book, you are an author. If you publish a short story in a magazine, you're an author. Like, and again, once you've accepted you're an author and you can call yourself an author, then your mindset shifts and you start to you know see things even before you start to kind of get a bit more excited about certain things you treat your books in a slightly different way um but yeah it's 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 a tough one because I know I know where the question comes from and you're right I've seen so many people even within our community that are like oh yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really a writer and even at SokaCon there were authors there who are you know nominated for awards and all this kind of stuff and so many of them you speak to them it's like oh yeah if the book's any good or this there's there's always that kind of self-deprecating talk mm -hmm. on an author's tongue and that never really goes away so like yeah if you're a writer you're writing actively I would I would argue I think if you've not written for like 10-15 years maybe like start getting into the practice again um, mm -hmm. but again that's just a personal definition that's not yeah to say that's how you define yourself um and yeah if you're an author you publish some stuff yeah I agree it's um it's funny I think any kind of creative job just because of the nature of um, subjectivity, mm -hmm. it's hard for people to fully, like you say, commit to that kind of label. Um, so I do like a lot of creative stuff. Like I draw and I paint and I sew now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I cross stitch. Um, 
trying to think of other things that I scrapbook like just if if it like will get me with like my fingers dirty paint or like the potential of like making something out of nothing then I'm there but I certainly I mean obviously right now I wouldn't call myself a dressmaker because I've just learned how to thread a sewing machine um but I wouldn't call myself an artist as in like drawing painting um I find it difficult to label myself as an artist in the general sense. Um, I think mostly because I'm very Northern in mm. a lot of my mindsets. And when I hear people refer to themselves as an artist, I think it's a bit wanky. Um, but like at the same time, if, if I hear like Lady Gaga talk about herself as an artist, I'm like, yeah. And I think the only difference there is like, she believes in who she is and she has the validation to back it up uh -huh. and i i think one has to come before the other right like it's very difficult for you to ever be validated if you don't believe in yourself and if you don't um, put anything out yeah exactly and i think i definitely had that same idea so like you know if you are writing stuff then you are a writer that it's just as simple as that like you know I think people assume that if they say they are a writer they are saying I am good at this yes like I am a writer but mm -hmm. there are number one again like art is subjective and number two there are bad writers but they're still writers yeah <laughs> still writing yeah. um so all it is is describing what you are doing like any profession like mm -hmm. a plumber plums that's what they do good or bad <laughs> huh good or bad yeah good or bad uh -huh. they're still a plumber yeah um and i agree with you i think the term author for me specifically refers to like publishing a book but again that's a personal thing mm -hmm. for me so like i wouldn't call myself an author just yet like fully because even though like i have written a book i have not yet published it I'm still going through the editing and all that kind of stuff. So I think when I press publish, then like I feel like I've earned that title. Because, because you've got I... a big red button that says publish. Publish, author. Yeah. But at the same time, it's easy to say that. I remember when I met your um, friends over Christmas and they asked me what I did. And I was like, <laughs> because with people that I know, and I am around and they understand who I am. I don't mind saying it, but when you meet normies or people you've uh. not met before, saying you like are a writer or an author or a painter or whatever, like, first of all, there's this like reverence, this weird reverence, but it usually comes across as like, oh, aren't you clever? Mm -hmm. And it's like, not really, it's it's a different, t t t doesn't, it's not about intelligence. Um, but it is difficult because they always have questions. And, and then, suggestions for ideas for books that they want to write. Yeah. And it's it's those kind of questions that start to make you feel, especially if you don't have that like inner locus of validation that most of us don't have, damn. Um, <laughs> you start to feel like, I can often feel like, they're calling me a liar by asking the questions, even though they're just interested. But that's that's my own head. That's well, it's like the acting own... thing, isn't it? It's like I'm an actor. Oh, well, I've seen you in anything. When you, I'm just like, I, I think you could probably answer that better than uh -huh. me. Do you recognize my face? <laughs> if it's no, then probably not, mm -hmm. mate. Like, yep. but it is that thing, like, you know, I'm an author. Oh, like anything I've heard of. And like, it's a little bit harder in that sense because, you know, your face isn't what sells the book. Unless yep. you're Gaiman or King or, you know. And also um, the assumption that, that, like, particularly in the UK, oh, you're an author, you must be in Waterstones. Yeah. Yeah, it's still the very kind of, like, old guard mm -hmm. ideas around just media in general, like TV, film, uh, books. It, there's still very much in the wider population the assumption that unless, like, someone else has said you're good and has put you forward or something, and then, it, then it's not real. Yeah. And that's bullshit. Like, I mean, The Martian. Is it The Martian that was self-published? Yes. Tell Matt Damon that it's not a real book because he was in that film. Uh-huh. You know, like, it. the only thing really behind these labels is, like you say, it's, I think a lot of the time, 
it's more about being able to confidently step into that. And that's what we're scared of. Because if it's one thing writing by yourself, maybe not telling anyone, like, you know, in your closet or your room or, or whatever, because it's safe there. Even though it's scary, you're writing like, oh, like, mm -hmm it's safe but the the minute you start like verbalizing to people that you love and and you know people that maybe you've met or you respect or whatever all of those doubts start to come in all of those who are you to do this starts to come in yeah and really it's just you're just describing what you do like mm -hmm. I think if you're an accountant you don't really have that I mean maybe you've just first graduated from accountancy school yeah that's the thing I'm sure yeah. um yeah. You, you might be like, oh, you know, I trained to be an accountant or I've just qualified as an accountant because there is that thing of like, I've not quite done it yet, like professionally. So I I, I don't feel like I can fully say I'm an accountant mm -hmm. um, or, you know, I'm an accountant in training or yeah, whatever accountants <laughs> say. Um, but with anything creative, it is it is very much. You are announcing that you that you are different and that you have not followed the path that we've been told to follow mm -hmm. and that comes with questions that comes with curiosity that comes with who are you to think you can do something different yeah and I think that's where a lot of that comes from but just like black and white same as you if you're writing you're a writer mm -hmm. and if you've published for me specifically like I say books but I you know like that could be short stories novellas whatever then you're an author yeah. You know, I mean, like celebrities get called authors if they've like signed off on a cookbook that they definitely have not come up with the recipes for. Yeah. Like they are labeled in the papers as an author mm -hmm. because their name is on a book that has been published. And I think it is really like if you just look at it that black and white. Yeah. Well, it's hard because society's not built that way. I mean, cre yeah. creative endeavors are titles that we take versus trade jobs are those that we're given so again like mechanic yes. accountant even designer because obviously design is very much utilized in a lot of jobs because of how digital age is mm -hmm. um all of these titles as you say you step into a job and you're given them whereas for a lot of the stuff that we do like you know writing aside but painting but even when um i was free running like it was a while before i grabbed the title of i'm a free runner like mm -hmm. this is this is what i do and it is it is all about the stories we tell ourselves like and I've said this in other in other ways before but like you know there was a point in my life where I was a free running coach and that was what I did who I am and that's what I told myself mm -hmm. and the idea of being like I'm going to go into a writer because I told myself I'm a free running coach that wasn't the thing that I should be doing yep and there's always going to be that sort of first step into the pool that first sort of trial into seeing whether you can do that like something will grab you and a moment will come where you're like oh I've got 10 minutes I'll just play over here and it grows and it grows um and and when you first start out that kind of stuff is very very difficult to do to kind of adopt that to take it and to go okay this is this is what I am especially when yeah. like you say there's this fear of being told that you're rubbish at that thing so you're not a writer mm -hmm. versus in trade things where you're qualified you can just step in you you've kind of already got backing that you're okay for this job although I've met a lot of people in their jobs yeah. that weren't qualified to do that shit mm -hmm. um Whereas, uh, oh, it keeps slipping onto the end of my tongue and then going back. Um, <laughs> where do I go with this? So, uh, yeah, you have to learn or understand very, very early on that mistakes are part of it, failure is part of it, and no one starts good. Like you say, there are bad writers out there, but they're, they're bad writers. And the thing that makes them writers is they're still going and they're still working to improve, as we all do with each thing that we do. Like, you know, I've been writing since 2014 now, so I'm coming up to, like, my decade of sitting down at a desk and, and doing this. And... I'd like to think that in over those years, I've gotten a lot better at what I do. But in yeah. the beginning, like I shared this story um, with some people in SokaCon, like the first story, first full short story I ever wrote uh, that wasn't for a course or anything um, was this 1000 word story that I handed over to my mom. And it was a short story about her dad, like in a kind of weirdly um, memoir slash dark style. And I handed this over to her and was like, Oh, I've written a story. What do you think? And I remember holding it, just going, hmm. and then popping it down. And I was like, oh, I need to validate myself here because, yeah. like, and then what I've learned now is that she's not my audience. And mm -hmm. I'm not just saying that to be dismissive and to be a dick, but like the stuff that I write, she does not read. She just will not, and I don't want yeah. her to because there's a lot of 
stuff that she doesn't see in it. Yeah, so many erections. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just going to be a constant, like just a t-shirt, so many erections. Dan yeah, it's, um, I can't let it drop. Every, every letter made out of dicks. Um, <laughs> my God. <laughs> I mean, your last name's Wilcox, come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Lean into the brand, Dan. But yeah, so when you're early on in that journey and you're seeking that validation, it's hard, but you need to look for the right people for a yeah. start. Like your family may not be that right person. Um, but it is it is a case of putting that label on yourself going, this is what I'm choosing to do. I'm going to try this for a year, for two years. Like, you yes. know, myself, I got very, very swept up and it's nine years later. Um, but at the point in which you're like, I'm going to start writing stuff, you're a writer. Straightforward. I, I see, like, I totally get where you're coming from in the sense of like, I'm not an author until I've published a book. Because so many of the connotations of publishing tend to center around books and these physical big things that you can hold. Um, I would stretch that personally, but like, again, what we're kind of emphasizing here is that everyone will have a slightly personal definition on what that looks like. Yeah. And so what I will say is if you're already writing, if you're already trying to publish a book and you know, you're a few words in it, you're a hundred words in it, you're a chapter into it, like you're, you're a writer, you're writing. Mm-hmm. Um, keep working until you can officially become an author by whatever de- definition that is for you. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Um, there we go. Six weeks off, already setting the world to rights. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add before we do the little uh, outro? Let me, I don't, I don't think so. I think we covered like specifically for the question. I think, I think we covered, we covered it really. I would just, I would just say, and we used to get told this all the time at drama school and I think it applies a lot no of notes. <laughs> no notes. Take the note, bitch. That was something. Just take, shut up and take the fucking note. Mm-hmm. Um, but one of the things they used to say to us um, is this is a self selecting industry. 100%. You wake up every day and you choose to be an actor. And I think it's the same with writing. Like, you wake up every day and you choose to be a writer. You choose to be an author. And that, again, doesn't mean you have to write every day. We've 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 touched on that. That's bullshit. Um, but the reason, like, Dan's almost a decade in is because even on, like, those days and stretches of time when, like, you know, health has gone and, like, time isn't there and all the rest of it, like, he's chosen to stay. He's chosen to stay. He's self-selected. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, any kind of creative industry is self-selecting. You choose to be here. You choose to stay. And all you have to do is just answer that question every day. Like, am I still a writer? Do I still want to do this? Mm-hmm. Yes? Cool. I'm a writer. Like, yeah. That's what I would add, I think. Perfect. Well, before I go into the intro, just a reminder for people that very, 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 very soon, uh, the Activated Office community is opening up for free. So very, 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 very soon. Probably not the day that this airs, probably like a week or two. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll be able to go to activatedoffice.com and you'll be able to just jump straight into our Discord and start getting involved in all the conversations over there. So keep an eye out for that. It will 100% be posted on all socials and also on this podcast so if you're a regular listener which i assume you are because you're listening to this and my voice is in your ears uh <laughs> then keep an eye out for that because that'll be coming very 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 soon very soon very soon um and i guess there's nothing left to say other than a massive thank you to you the listeners for tuning in we appreciate you and the time you choose to spend with us each and every week when we're here and as always <laughs> if you're looking to level up your writing and activate your author career head on over to activateauthors.com to find out all about our community our resources and all the other wonderful stuff we've got going on mm-hmm. One more time from myself and from Samantha Frost. We'll see you next week. Good. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) Activate your energies.